All right, greetings, friends. I hope all is well. So, there's no book that has ever gotten under my skin worse than The Sunset Limited by Cormac McCarthy. With no hyperbole, I can say that that book plunged me into three days of existential despair. Um, now, I read the book just after getting out of the military and um, having been overseas and having seen things overseas and having a lot of thoughts in my mind about life and God and the meaning of it all or the meaningless, uh, meaninglessness of it all. So I'm sure that fed into my reaction uh, to the book. But still, my reaction was definitely also a testament to the genius of Cormac McCarthy, who um, is my favorite living author and uh, I, I just think an absolute genius. And that book... That book really got under my skin. But this morning I was having a text message with my friend about the book. And he said something that got me thinking that totally changed the way I see the book. So I'm very grateful to him. But it's also a fascinating uh, perspective on the book that I just wanted to share. Now let me say I'm making this primarily for people who have already, seen, who have already read the book or seen the movie. And the book was, the book was, it was called a novel in dramatic form. The entire book is all dialogue. 2006 was when it was published. <clears throat> and because it's all dialogue, it was it was performed, I think it was performed on Broadway almost immediately. But then there was also a film made. I think it was made directly for Netflix, but I'm not sure about that. But it starred um, Tommy Lee Jones and... Um, oh, man. How can I not think of his name? Samuel L. Jackson. And... Um, and so, you know, if you read the book or seen any of those things, um, I'm primarily the thoughts that I want to share for you. But if you have not, and you plan to someday, then you, should, you might not want to watch this because I'm going to just completely spoil the ending. I'm going to go into a, a quick recap for those who may just want to listen and uh, hear some thoughts about it. Because the thoughts go beyond the book, right? Beyond or beyond the film, just beyond the story in whatever form. Because I think it cuts to the nature of uh, the nature of God and of our quest for God and our quest for um, yeah how we communicate with the unknown right and so I think the book as all great literature is as all great art is is a, is a window a vehicle into those those bigger things right so what I want to discuss goes beyond simply discussing the book so for those of you who have not seen the book or read the book or seen the film or whatever form I'll give, I'm going to give a brief recap so the book takes place the book all takes place in the apartment of one of the characters off screen before the book starts one of the characters tries to commit suicide the other character rescues him brings him home and so when the story opens it's the two of them sitting in the kitchen I believe it was sitting in the kitchen and they're just talking and that's the entirety of the book is these two people talking in this in the apartment and you know their conversation is about god but also just about meaning about life um basically about whether or not life is worth living but it also cuts largely to god and so the two characters one is named black and one is named white that's both their respective skin colors but i don't know how much significance that their skin color actually has to the names i mean i'm not sure maybe cormac did have something in his mind um, about that but to me when you talk about the black and the white it's more about the fundamental question of whether or not there is a god largely cuts to whether or not this life has any real meaning or purpose and the answer to that is black or white really i mean um i think it was albert camus who who said that like either there is a god or there isn't count camus said something like so, no i might be getting that wrong like because camus i think might, might have been the one who said the only really philosophical question is whether or not life is worth living or whether or not one should commit suicide or something so so forget that aside please my point is that really the fundamental question it to me it is black or white right either there is a god or there isn't and if there is a God, well, then that changes everything. That changes our entire paradigm, our entire perspective. Or there isn't, and which does the same thing, right? So to me, that's more of what I get out of the, the black and white thing. But, but maybe, maybe there was other aspects to it that um, McCarthy was implying that I just didn't pick up on. And so they have this debate. And, you know, each guy gets his own, right? Each guy holds his ground, does really, really well. 
But in the end, and so White is a professor and he's an atheist, like a hardcore atheist. Yeah, like one of those like active atheists who has thought this through and has arguments to crush any other person's belief in God. But Black is an evangelical Christian. And he has, he, he's got his own, I think he calls it his trick bag. And um, he might not have the educational credentials as White, but he's slick, man. He's slick and he's smart. And the two of them have a very equal match, right? Until the end, when White just, in my opinion, in my opinion, right? This is open for, um, there's gray area here, I suppose. But to me, if you're looking at it from a purely logical fashion, I feel like in the end, White just kind of sprints, crushes him, uh, destroys his argument, and then leaves and goes off to go kill himself to complete what he had started off screen before the story started. It's very grim. And um, and that's why when I read the book, I remember sitting it down. I was so, you know, McCarthy, it's funny because he's my favorite author, but he does this to me, man. The same thing has happened, really, the same thing's happened with pretty much all of his books. But I remember also being so frustrated um, during in uh, No Country for Old Men when Llewellyn, who actually was being loyal to his wife, gets caught in a scenario where he gets killed and it looks like he had been cheating on her even though he hadn't been i just thought that was like why did you do that mccarthy like why dude um the guy did what was right but ended up dying with everybody thinking he had done what was wrong including his wife i don't know why cormac did that but anyway um and so in the sunset limit it was the same thing right the end just it I remember, like, like I said, uh, three days of just total existential despair. Because as you're going through it, like, like you're thinking, like, or I was anyway, I was thinking, I was examining each guy's points and thinking, like, well, that makes sense, that makes sense. And I just thought, logically, White just won it in the end. And, um, and so that's why I had the reaction that I had. But what my friend brought up, which was really, really interesting, was he had a different take on it. Because the way that he sees it is so at the end, uh, White goes off to kill himself and Black um, collapses. I, I forget if it actually says he collapsed, but it's, it's implied. And he's begging God. He's saying, God, God, why did you give him the words but not me? Meaning, like, why, why did you channel through, through him the stronger argument? Why not me? And as he's begging this, the sun rises in the distance, right? And that's how the book closes. But there's a lot of significance in that sunrise, which I, I hadn't given enough thought to. Because my buddy brings up the point that... So Black is in despair because he wasn't given the, the stronger logical argument. But the sun rises behind him. The sun being the, a symbol of um, newness, um, new life, but also God, right? the sun as the symbol of God rising behind him. And so what I started thinking of after my buddy mentioned this was how brilliant that actually is because that is actually how the pursuit, the quest for God actually works. There are logical arguments for it. Anybody who doubts that, go, there are great theological thinkers out there. Um, and they're brilliant men who, who could who can talk the tail off a cat, you know? Um, but ultimately, ultimately, whether or not you believe in God, it is an act of faith, right? It's the leap of faith. It is, it is not an act of logic or reason. And the way God communicates to us, if you choose to believe that God does communicate with us, and for the record, I do believe that, and I do believe there is a God, and I do believe that God communicates to us <clears throat> when that god when god does so he rarely does so and i just say he for this the sake of ease I, I i'm not settled on exactly whether i think it's a he she or just a, a abstract creative force right i don't know i just say he for for convenience and so he communicates to us through symbol and image and, and um, emotion and, and impressions. And 
that's what I realized. And that's why the book twisted from being this <laughs> despair-inducing um, work to now something that I find so uh, inspiring. And I, I'm going to read it again. I can't wait to read it again now. Because I think that makes sense. I think that is actually... Cormac is not a guy who... He doesn't, he doesn't mince words, one could say. He doesn't make choices accidentally. Every, every sentence, every scene is done very deliberately. And so I believe he, he set that in there intentionally. I believe that is intended to be a significant aspect to the book, right? Um, to, or to the story and to the debate. Is that, yes, White, White won in a purely logical way. And what did that earn him? It earned him suicide, right? So that's a great victory there. But the the sun still rose. God still rose. It just doesn't do it in the logical, rational way that white approaches it. Now, obviously, that, that raises all kinds of problems, right, and questions. Because, and this is fair. Like, I, 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 I always try to maintain, like, integrity and openness to the debate and, and um, honesty in the debate. Because it does bother me that why can't this be just logically and clearly proven, right? That, that the existence of God that does bother me, and so that's why I always like I actually I actually respect a lot of atheists' um, approaches to it because they refuse to bend to their emotional desire, right? And and well, I, that's probably a little shady because I think a lot of them are driven by emotional desire to tear things down and and. Uh, but whatever. My point is, those honest atheists who really are trying to get to the truth and just won't allow themselves to accept the existence of God because it doesn't make logical sense, I respect that, even though I disagree with them. I definitely respect their perspective. But, um, because ultimately, whether or not we choose to believe in God, and, and but no, ultimately, the way that God communicates to us or the way that I hallucinate God communicates to us, the way God communi has communicated to, through, to people throughout time, has always been an image, impression, and symbol, right? Not so much logic and rationality, right? God, God doesn't, if you read you know, the stories of the holy books, it's, it's rarely that God is um, communicating to people like he's not dictating a philosophical treatise. It's, it's usually impressions, images, these epiphanies, and these um, powerful, who was it, Paul on the road to Damascus with the, the light over to his side, right? Blinded and, and goes from persecuting Christians to um, becoming like the, the greatest uh, or the most significant um, carrier of Jesus's uh, message of all, right? So that's how God communicates. And how brilliant is it that that's how the book ends? Because that the book ends with, yeah, white one, logically, but God's still communicating in the way that God communicates. It's not the way that's going to win you a debate, but it's the way that's going to get you up in the morning. It's the way that's going to keep driving you forward. And um, it's the way that's going to keep giving you hope. And so... Anyway, it was just very significant for me to have this turned around. Um, it's a great work of art. A great, it's, a, it's a work of art worth wrestling with, in my opinion. It's a work of art worth wrestling with. And um, I just thought it was so cool having a text message with my buddy this morning. And zap, I get this whole new perspective on this. That, um, I don't know, Just it, it, I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was... Uh, Hopeful, and I can't wait to read the book again. So I just wanted to share it with all of you out there. Maybe some of you have found it interesting. I sure hope so, since you sat there and watched this. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Peace out, my friends. I would love to hear what any of you think about the book or about the general thoughts that I just shared down below. I, I would love to have that conversation. All right, peace out, my friends.